Welcome back from lunch, or whatever you did while we were gone. Uh, this is now chapter two, and it's about how to use all of the work windows. So it's about the project window, the source window, the timeline, the tools, and the audio meter, because we covered the media browser in the last chapter. Um, so basically, you, you're you supposed to be in the editing mode, as we had said, and I might show you how to do the pref save a preset later. Um, and all the work windows are interconnected, which is kind of cool and kind of weird. So you can, you know, click and drag anything anywhere you want. Um, <laughs> some people don't like that. Most people are fine with it. They leave it alone. Um, if anybody doesn't like that, they do have the option to undock each of the windows. So. Basically, if you go to, let's say you want to undock the effects window for some reason. If you say undock panel, right click, undock panel, then suddenly your effects window is over here, right? Now, as I said before, it's kind of annoying because it's on top of everything else, so chances are you don't want to do that. But I wanted to show you how if you wanted to. But also, as I mentioned before, there might be tabs in some of your windows that you don't want. So in this case, in libraries, uh, I can use the hamburger and I can close the panel. I can get rid of info because I don't really need it. So I'm going to close that panel. I'm going to get rid of markers because I do those in other ways. Um, I'm going to get rid of history. Close panel. And now I can expand it. And then I only have the three um, that I want in there. <clears throat> and the effects panel. I go through a lot of everything, but I'm not going to go very much through this because there are so many filters in here, things you can do with video effects, audio transitions, audio effects, etc. So that's sort of for later. That might not be for this particular video. Okay, so there is something really great that you should do to make work better. If you use this and scroll along, 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 I'll maybe make this a little bigger so you can see better what I'm doing. I'm going to get to something called good. And I'm going to hold it, left click and hold it, and I'm going to drag it all the way back to the beginning, which I wish I could do more efficiently, but this seems to be the way to do it. Um, gets kind of tiresome, but okay. I'm just going to leave it there for the moment because I'm going to go back and get another one called Description. And I'm going to do the same thing. Drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it. Oh, it dropped. Let me, let me get it again. Oops. Oh, no, it did go there. Okay. So um, the first one I want is good. So I'm going to put that at the beginning. The, and I'm going to make it smaller because there's no need for it to be big. And then I want Description. I don't care about frame rate, so I'm going to get that out of the way. And basically, all the stuff at the end you're never going to really care about. So what you're going to care about is good and description. And then I like media duration next. And then media start and media end. And you'll see when we're editing, the reason for that, it's when you're looking at clips and you think, well, that's a good one, that's a good one. Then you can just put a check. Oops, sorry, you can't do it when it's the folder. You can do it when it's the clip. And this is, I haven't yet named, this isn't the finished one with named files. Um, so I can say it's good. And then I can here, I can say, let's say I gave it a simple clip name, but now I can say the better zoom one. Or however I want to remind myself of what might be good about that one. So then you have a neat project window. And I'm going to drag that back. You don't always have to see media duration, but that can be handy because sometimes you're editing and there's a section that's, who knows, it's you know a minute and a half long that you think you can cover with a certain shot. And if you just look at media duration and it shows you that it's a minute and a half long, then there you're good to go. I mean, you can drag it in and see if it fits, but um, it's also sort of handy sometimes to see media duration. But I find good and description very helpful. Okay, now that I showed you how to set up your Project window. Um, I just want to remind you that if I've decided to look into the folder with all the clips, I, I have that so that I can get back to the main folder. 
some things are the same as when we were in the media browser window, like looking at it in list view or looking at it as images, um, freeform view. Uh, there's also scale. You can see it bigger or smaller. Then there's a function called automate to sequence. And if you have a series of clips selected and you say automate to sequence, it will ask you how to do it. This is not something I use, but it will ask all these things. If you want to put in an audio transition or a video transition, if you want it placed sequentially, whatever. And when you say, OK, I'll just do it for the fun of it, you get these three clips. Oops. You get these three clips in your sequence um, with these crossfades. I don't think that's very useful because the thing is, if you just want to bring in some clips, all you do is select them and drag them in, you know? So I don't, I don't quite see the point of it. So here, I just want to point out that up here, there's a search line. So if I wanted to find one, clip number one, it would jump up, even though I've renamed it. Um, and down here is another one, and I don't understand what this is. So if you ever want to find something in your project folder, use that top search function, um, top search line. Um, then there's new bin, and then there are the, uh, the new items, and we'll go over more of them later, but just so you know that that's where that is. And one thing in here is sequence. So you remember you did that to create your first sequence, right? But let's say you've been editing and you think, yeah, I think I'm going to make a second sequence just with music or something. Um, if you make a new sequence, you have to run through all of those um, options and whatever in that window that opens. And really, all you have to do is right-click on this, go up to Duplicate, and you'll have a duplicate. And then you rename it, you know, the music one. And when you open it, it will have the other edit. But all you do is a select and delete, and you start out with a fresh sequence that matches your settings for the first one. So that's what I do. I just duplicate and delete everything and start over again. So now, since I changed this, and I really like this layout, I'll point out to you that up here I have one already. But if I wanted to, I would go up here, and I would right click, and I would say Save as New Workspace. And I would call it um, Great Edit Space, or whatever I wanted to call it. And I would spell it correctly. <laughs> and I would say OK. And then it appears over here. So I'm going to go back to mine, just because that's bogus. Um, OK, so now that I've done a bunch of work, I'm going to do a save. And in chapter one, I talked about how important it is to name your clips. I just want to reiterate that, because I want you to picture something. You didn't name your clips. You didn't rename your clips. And you've been working. And you looked at your stuff at the beginning. And you saw some things that were really great. And now you've been working for three weeks. And suddenly, you've got this section of your edit together. And the image of the woman throwing the javelin would be perfect. You finally found the place for it. And then when you want to get it, you look in your project window in those folders called 001 whatever. And if you remember that hers was 00078, you got a better memory than I do. So that's the thing. If you named it Woman with Javelin, then boom, it's there, and you're editing, and you're feeling really great because you finally found the place for that shot. So anyway, word to the wise. Um, from the wise, I guess. Um, if you decide that some clips are garbage, which you might, and there were some in, in this project that I did for this, you'll see. Um, so I looked at all of them, and let's say I had three takes of something, 
and two of them were really bad. And so I could have deleted them completely or I could just call them with something that takes them to the bottom. So they're like Z1 and Z2 and Z3 for like the bad ones because I have learned that when I first look at stuff, I think, eh, that's bad. And then, you know, three weeks later, I think, uh, no, that might be really great. So it's still in there. And I just look through the Z's and I find it and then I'm good and I rename it. Um, but if you decide something is really bad, you just left the camera running, um, you, can, you can delete it, but it doesn't delete the media. And that's something that's a safety factor for you. It means that, you know, you've got something in here, you click delete and the, it goes away, but it's still sitting over there in your hard drive. So if you ever later wanted it, you could get it back. The other thing that can happen sometimes is that your media gets disconnected. Um, that could be because you mistakenly renamed one of your scratch disk folders, don't do that, or renamed your project folder, don't do that, or f for other reasons, who knows. When that happens, the icon um, that you're used to seeing won't be there and there'll be a kind of blankish one with a question mark in it, whatever, you'll, you'll be able to tell that that's not a good thing, right? And I can't duplicate that here because I have not lost my media, but if you were to have that happen, it would say re link, here it, it's grayed out because the media is linked, but it would say link media, and then it would open a window and it would show, you know, the name of the clip and it would say, you know, locate or search. And you, if you knew what folder it was in, you would locate it and it would be highlighted. And then you'd say, reconnect, whatever, and it would be fine. Um, or you could do search. And the other thing is, if you have uh, something happen to a, an entire folder of stuff, um, if you instead click on the folder and say link, then if you locate one of those clips, um, then all of them will repopulate. Okay, so also when you're um, in the project window and you right click on a clip, you get a lot of options. Um, duplicate is handy, I just showed that to you. Um, speed duration isn't handy because there's a much better way to do it, which I'll show you later. Um, Label, if you like to make things a color that helps, you know, cues you into whatever you're doing, fine. You can choose any color. Um, An open in source is completely silly because all you have to do is double click on the clip to open it in the source. So why would you go to all this trouble to do that? Okay, we've pretty much um, covered the project window and, um, and I, I've now reverted so from now on, you're going to be looking at the real footage, the real edit uh, for this. And so one thing you'll notice is that um, the, these tabs are out of place. So I'm just going to drag that one over because I want the project thing to be the first one I see. And I've got it set up for good in description, etc. And I have various sequences already. And I'll show you these later, the mats and the master clips are all here. Let me make this a little bigger. The master clips are here. And um, since I was doing something very sequential, it's basically how to cook, it made sense for me to call them one intro to the list, you know, three shots. These are the two good ones, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then I will show you later making title cards. So I have various folders already in place. Okay. But now I'm ready to go to the source window and I'm going to open the master clips folder so I can call one or two of them up. Basically in the source window is where you make some pretty good decisions about what you're going to be doing um, before you bring them into the sequence. Because like I said, you can just take your clips and drag them all into the sequence, but mm, you know, best to kind of look at each one, see also what the garbage is at each end, um, and then put them in so that you sort of start in a fairly cool way once you're in 
the timeline window editing. Okay. Before we do that, I'm going to just bring this up again and make one more, I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to call it um, Carbo Edit, um, you know, Start or something. Okay. And that's the one I'm going to have over here. Uh, I'm going to close this one for the moment. Okay. So now back to seeing some of my clips. And we're going to, again, bring this down so that we're in the source window. And it's similar to the program window, but let me just bring a clip in. Uh, you know, a lot of the functions are the same. So I'll, so here we go. So as you see, again, it's like a short clip name so that uh, I can read it. If I bring in one from the timeline, you see it's got that edit name plus the clip name. So that's why if your edit names are really long and your clip names are really long, you kind of don't know what you're doing. So it's good, short, and sweet, you know, all the time. Okay, so let me bring this one back up. And so again, like in the other, uh, there's the source and then there are the effect controls, which I'll get to later. And there were several others like the audio meter and metadata. Um, you'll probably have other tabs in there that you might want to keep or not keep. It's up to you. I take the audio thing out because I don't really work with it very much. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm going to go back to the source window so I can explain to you what you're looking at. There's blue time code on the left, and that's where you are in the clip. This is the duration of the clip. So if I run this, well, it was at the end, so I'm going to go back to the middle, and you see it changed. I run it. That's changing as it runs, and it's the clip is this long. Uh, then there's fit, and there are all these different sizes. So if I make it 150, you can't really see her, can I? So I'm going to go back to fit. That would be what you would usually do. Um, I forgot to clear this out, so I'm going to select all and delete those so I can start there. Um, if I want to drag in both the picture and the audio, then I drag it from the image. If I only want the picture, I drag video only, as it says. If you rest on anything, it tells you. And that, which looks like a fish, is actually a, an audio waveform. And that way, I only drag in the audio. And it's very handy to remember that because there really are times where you just want the audio or you just want the picture. And you can obviously delete them, but that involves unlinking things, whatever. So good to remember, video only audio only. And then this is for viewing it full or at half resolution or a quarter. And sometimes you can be kind of slowed down if you're looking at it in full. So just leave it at half. It looks perfectly fine. You'll be fine. Now th there's a wrench icon, which is for settings. And really, you only need to know that you want it on composite video. That's so you can see your video. If you have it on audio waveform, then that's great. You can see your audio waveform, but I think most of the time you want to see your video. So you want to put it back on composite video. Um, and there's also show transport controls and show markers. And you definitely want that. You want to see your markers when you put them in, when I teach how to do that. Um, and you want to show the transport controls. So that's a pretty simple setting for that. I've been giving you all these warnings, like save everything and name your files. And the other thing I want to tell you is that you should learn keyboard shortcuts, which maybe I said already in chapter one. I don't know. But they're so much faster. They're so easy. So I will try to always show, you know, click and pull down and choose that. I'll show you all that. But also just always mention the keyboard shortcuts because it's so much faster. Okay. Um, I'm going to get back to this, but below this uh, are all these icons. So you rest on them and it says mark in, mark out, go to in, 
play, blah, 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 blah. And then there's loop and export frame, which those two don't tend to be in the default. So if you've opened it up and you don't see loop and export, which are both pretty handy, you go to this button editor and then you pick, well, now I'm going to just pick something I don't have yet, and you drag it down into there and you say OK. And if you don't want it, you pick it up and get rid of it and you say OK. Um, so for me, I, I, wanted to, I wanted you to see these, but for me, like, I would never have mark in and mark out because I would always just use the I key for in. Easy. This is go to in, but I also can just do shift I to go to in. I can do shift O to go to out. So again, you know, if you want to go to the in, want to go out this way, fine. I'm going to hit the space bar to play it instead of having to grab my mouse and hit play. Okay? And I will explain the export frame later. And if you want to loop through, um, And we could listen to this a hundred times. Okay, but we won't. So now that you've sort of got everything else set up in the source window, you can actually look at a clip and decide what you want to do with it. So this now has an endpoint set in it, but I can move it back so that I start from the beginning. Okay, go. So you hear me say, okay, go. And then she All starts right, talking. And if I want to go back, hi, I'm using the right and left arrow keys one frame at a time dit, 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 so I can get back to where I think it should start. And I'm going to press the I key for in. Now there's my in point. Then, I, you know, let's say I, I'm watching this for the first time and I want to just, you know, play through. Hi, but since I have watched it already and I know what I'm doing, I'm going to just get us towards the end. Okay, she stopped. So I'm going to go back a little bit. I'm just left clicking and dragging the play bar. I'm going to go back a little. And I know she said five ingredients and not wine. And not wine. And she stopped. So I think, okay, fine. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll do a better cut in the edit. And I'm going to do the O for out. And I've got my out, right? Um, there is a marker already here, which I made earlier. But if I was playing, if, if I was playing it and I thought, mm, I want to kind of remember the place where she raises her hand, let's say, then I'd be playing it and I'd have my finger on the M key. There are only five ingredients, M. Maybe six. M again Pasta, for six. Bacon, eggs, eggs parmesan, parm, pepper. pepper. Okay, so maybe, maybe you do something like that. There's something about the shot where you just want to know later certain moments. And so you simply go along and make those marks, and they will be in your clip when you drag it into your edit. One thing about working in the source window with your clips is that you're never making anything permanent. It's not like film. You haven't just cut off the head and tail of a piece of film, right? So let's say I looked at this, and then this is a pretty clear case of what's the beginning and end. Um, but maybe it isn't. And so I've decided uh, I want it to be shorter, um, or I need it to be shorter because of where it's going to go in the film. So I can left click. I get that red. Oh, I'm over here. Get that red. Thing, and I'm going to drag that in. That's my new endpoint. I'm going to do the same thing to that, and I'm going to drag it in. And as you see, let's say I said, okay, I need this shot, regardless of what she's saying, to be exactly seven seconds, right? Seven, oops, well, 701. I can trim it later. So I can always move my ins and outs that way. And also, if I if it was a continuous thing, like somebody's swimming, and I've selected an in for one, two, three, uh, but then I'm watching it and I realize just a little later, because it's the right length that I want, just a little later, there's something a little smoother about the way they swim. 
I can just grab this in the middle where those little black lines are. I get my hand and I move it over. So I've just changed my end point. So now I'm on the really smooth swimming instead of the other one, okay? So that's basically what you're doing in the source. And then I'm going to bring this up and get rid of those. So you see that when I drag this in, um, I can expand it in various ways. And I've got those markers in there so that I know later, you know, where I might put it, another part of a shot or something. Um, I can also clear the markers by selecting it and going to markers and saying clear all markers. And also if you have a very long clip and you need to see only a small part of it or all of it or whatever, you can do that in two ways. You can either use this to expand or contract, or you can use your plus or minus keys, which I find, again, much handier than grabbing that little thing and pulling it along. So that's basically your source window. So now you know how to make really good decisions in there and bring them in to your edit. So let's say you've gone through a bunch of clips and you've put them into your edit and you're really happy, what are you gonna do? A save as maybe, right? Save as, get your next letter going. Now, because of how we're doing this, this is three days later and it's B, so there we go. So now we're gonna do the program window, which is similar in many ways to the source window. I mean, there are differences, but um, uh, some elements are similar. You see at the top, it's called what that edit is called. You have to have your play bar over an image in order to see it in the program window. The time code on the left is showing where you are in the edit. So as you see down here, I'm at five minutes, whatever, uh, there I am. The time code on the right is showing the duration of the whole edit. And in this case, we don't have much of an edit. But if I wanted to show you what it actually does, I would go to here and I would do an in with I, and I would use my up and down arrow keys. I would go to the last clip of this huge edit and do an O. And now we see that it's only 14 seconds and three frames, okay? So whenever you're working, you might wanna know, you know, ooh, how long is my edit now? You simply go in and put an I in at the beginning and an O at the end, and then you'll see the duration of it. Then the fit is the same, half is the same. The wrench is the same. There's nothing special I do in the program window that's different than the source window. Um, but again, at the bottom, there are things that you might want and that are not there. So again, there's mark in and mark out. What I've put in are things that you would want to put in if they're not there. One of them is safe margins. And one is, again, export. So again, you know, if you wanted to add something else, whatever it might be, um, let's just pick this for no reason. Whoa. I don't know why it didn't go in there. Why is it not in there? Oh, because I didn't drag it. Okay, see, I just showed you something that I do fairly often, which is thinking that if I pick it and say, okay, it will go in, but that's not the way it works. You have to drag it in. And now you say OK. So there you go. Safe margins are interesting because, as you see, let me make this bigger. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Make this bigger. It's showing uh, two margins. And the thing is, back in the world of film, projectors tended to cut off the edge of the frame. And so you always had to be super careful when you had text on the screen that you weren't going to, you know, they weren't going to be cut off. With digital, it's a little different. We sort of get the full frame. So maybe you don't have to be as careful, but I would say it's still worth it when you're doing your last stuff and you're putting up titles. 
um, to make sure at least stay within that outer box. Just, you know, because. An export frame I'll get to in a minute. And if we had just done this really great edit and we wanted to watch it full screen, we would do Command and tilde, which is the wavy key at the top left. And there it is. Eggs, parmesan, pepper. And then when we're done, we do escape and we're back in our program. Okay. Now we're going to go on to the next window, but since we did a few fabulous editing things now, I'm just going to do a simple save, right? And I'm going to move this up. And I'm going to move this over because I'd rather have the timeline window very visible. So now we're going to go to the timeline window, which is where you edit your sequence. Um, there are various parts. Some you can ignore. Some are important. Okay. So at the top you see we have uh, two open. I'm just going to close this one for now. So we're just looking at this one. This is the time code where your play bar is. Watch it change, okay? Um. If you need to know where you are. Okay. Below that are four icons and a wrench. The first icon, and it always tells you, insert or overwrite sequences as nests or individual clips. And I'm just going to say to each his own, I never use insert and overwrite. Insert, you put your play bar somewhere, you decide you want to put something there, you say insert and it inserts it there. Overwrite you say that, and it overwrites what you have. And I don't understand working that way. To me, I string my clips together. I think about what's good, where it goes, how to cut it. And I work that way, so that's kind of how I'm going to show you. The next thing is really great and really important. This little horseshoe, I guess it's meant to be a magnet or something. Anyway, it's snap, so it's either on or off. If you're in Snap and you've got this clip over here and you want to move it over there to butt up to it, there it goes, right? And you've got your little white triangles that are telling you, like, we're Snap, we're on it, right? If you're unsnapped, and how did I do that? Snap is the S keystroke. So I snapped on, as you see, snapped off. Okay, so we're snapped off. Here I am again, and I want to move it over, and I really want it to butt up to that shot. Well, it can sort of go anywhere it wants, right? So I want to be in snap to clip a lot of the time. Also, when you're cutting, it'll snap to where your razor is. They're, they're, most of the time, you love snap to clip, and then sometimes when you don't need it, it's easy. S, it's a toggle, S, and then you can move your stuff around however you want. Okay. The next one is link. Now, your clips are always linked. When you select your video, your audio is also highlighted and selected, right? Um, so when you move them around, they move in concert with each other. If you do unlink, then watch this. If I select that, that is not selected, which means if I move that, we're out of sync. Sometimes you might want to unlink something, but you never want everything to be unlinked because at the speed of work, you might suddenly end up with a bunch of things that are unlinked. So if you're unlinked, you know, you'll see the little boxes. And depending on which one you want to go where, you can choose move into sync, and now you're back in sync, right? Um, if, this is more for editing than how the timeline window works, but I'm just getting into it anyway. Um, if you wanted to slip it into sync, you can't do it, and I will explain that later. So for now, let's move it back into sync, and let's link everything again. So now all my clips are linked. So I would say keep that link thing blue, okay? The next thing is markers and who needs them because you've got your finger on the M key. But if you didn't, whatever. Um, so if I'm playing and I don't have anything selected, but let's say I'm listening to music, right? Olive oil to my and water. if I did Not some marks, I to. they're going to appear up here, which is maybe fine. 
but it might be that you actually want them in that particular clip, whether it's a piece of music or who knows what. That would have to be selected. Then, if you play... Spoiling, I'm going to cut up my bacon, which is guanciale. There, they're in there. Okay, so that's your choice. Sometimes you want them above, sometimes you want them within the clip, which just has to be selected in order for that to happen. Okay. Um, moving right along, uh, there's, you know, this is obviously your time code, and each clip will have a color above it. So if there's no color, it's fine. It doesn't need a color. Um, if it's green, it, it's going to use the render preview. If it's yellow, it's probably going to play back in real time just fine, like these are playing back fine. But sometimes, for some reason, they aren't, so you'd have to render them. Um, and red usually means, uh, I'm not playing until you render me. And that often is the case with audio, I have found. So that's a simple fix because I could edit this whole thing with that yellow up there and not care at all um, because it's playing fine. At the end, when I do the output, I'm going to render it all. But if I wanted for some reason or needed to render something, I could do an in and I could go down there and do an out, let's say on that clip, and I could go to sequence, render into out. I've just rendered that, and now the green has appeared, so that means we're good to go. Um, I'm going to expand this so that you can see these side things. We, when we set up the project, we, we asked to have six video tracks and six audio tracks, and that's what we have. The first column is saying where a clip will go when you bring it in. So it'll go, you know, if you want everything to come in on track one, fine. The second is to lock a track. I would caution you to almost never do this because it would be so easy to lock a track because you're thinking of doing something on another part that, you know, you don't want that to change. You want something else to change. And then you keep going. You forget that that track is locked. And when you start changing other things, now everything is a total mess. So use lock really, really carefully. The next So you know what I do? I just turn them all on because maybe if I'm trying to do something and it needed for them to be on, they'd be on, and that'd be great. And otherwise, who cares? they just sit there and be blue. Okay. Um, the next thing is toggle sync lock. And the default is for it to be on, because when it's off, those tracks won't move when you do a ripple or a roll edit. So just leave those be, okay? The next is the eyeball, so that you don't see... It's hard to see up there. You see how that's up there? You're like, we're not seeing anything. Over here, we're seeing an image very tiny at the moment. But anyway, mute will mute the entire track, which you might want to do at times. But there's a really cool function next to it, which is solo track. So let's say you have a lot of tracks by now. You might have eight or 10 tracks or 24 tracks, whatever. And you just really need to listen to one of them. You'd have to go through all the M's and mute all the other tracks unless you did solo track, and that way you would only hear that track. And if you had two tracks, voice and music, then you would choose two of them. And when you're done, you know, get rid of those. So that's very handy. And that is basically it for the functions in the timeline window. And now, there's just two more little windows, and then we're ready to start editing. So the first one is the audio meter window, which is over here on the right-hand side. And you'll see if I've recorded on two tracks. I've got it on two tracks. And you want it to be sort of where it is, like sort of in the negative 12 area. I can't talk and have it play at the same time. In the negative 12 area for like a decent level overall. Um, if you have stuff that's really hot or really low, you kind of want to work with it early on because picture this, you've done a really long interview with somebody or you filmed 
a football game, whatever it is, and it's like, ah, too loud, or not really loud enough, but you're going to edit it all through the film, if you set a new level for it and then start cutting it up, it'll be done everywhere. You can always set it later and then copy and paste into the various places where it appears, but it's kind of handy at the beginning to do it that way. Um, so, and I'll show you later how to do that. So the very last thing in this chapter is the tool window, and I'm going to run through it very quickly because you're going to use all of those tools when we get to chapter three, when you're actually editing. Okay, so I'll just speak my way through this. The first one is the selection tool. Um, it's the V key. The second one is the track select forward and back key. Uh, it's the A, so you end up with something like this, these double arrows, because they're going to select everything. The third one is ripple or roll, and you get this kind of icon. Uh, the next one is the cut tool, the razor. So that's C for cut, and it looks like a razor blade. The next one is the slip and the slide tool. I'll show you those. And you get that kind of uh, icon. The next one is the pen tool, which is the letter P for pen, and you use it to make keyframes. The next is the hand tool, obvious. And the next is the type tool, which I never use. So you will see how all of those work to make things wonderful for you uh, in the next chapter. So this is the end of chapter two. Thank you for watching this. I hope it's useful. Share it with anybody you want. I want to thank Princeton University for supporting me doing this because I did it in this beautiful studio. And Dan Kearns is the engineer for the University Broadcast Center. So he set it all up and he did a fantastic job and I want to thank him. So have a good time editing. <laughs>